distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor and privilege to be here in Washington, D.C., among all of you, to share with you some of the real struggles that my people, the Assyrian Christians of Iraq, have been and they are still going through until this exact moment in their indigenous land. When I received my invitation to attend this conference, I was asked by the organizers to address the situation of Christians living in north of Iraq as a minority group. The basis of the points that I will be addressing to you shortly is that the Christian minority group is supposed to reside in a safe haven which is protected and nurtured by the local and state governments. The reality, unfortunately, does not align with this depiction that is portrayed. With that being said, I would like to outline I would like to outline to you the following issues that are some of the existential threats to my people. Christian children are still being forced into Islam according to Islamization of minors law. When one of the parents is Muslim, the child automatically also becomes a Muslim. Assyrians, who also are called Chaldeans and Syriacs, cannot invest and establish businesses without being forced into a partnership with members of the ruling political parties in order for an Assyrian to start a business, you are forced to a partnership. The ancestral land of my people is a battlefield for the terrorist group PKK and the occupier Turkish army. Ancient Assyrian artifacts and historical site dating more than 4,000 years BC are continuously vandalized and damaged, sometimes even claimed to be belonging to the Kurdish culture, which create a large side effects misconception. Assyrians have not yet been recognized as the indigenous people of the land and the constitution, nor any of my people's rights have been guaranteed in any constitutional or legal, or legal document. As a member of my community, born, raised, and remaining in Iraq, I come to you here with a moral and historical obligation to inform you and the world that the population of my people have since the fall of Saddam Hussein decreased from 1.6 million to only 84,000. I must emphasize that we are now not even 100,000 left. I have witnessed all the atrocities that we went through that led to such a result. I'm an eyewitness of a slow genocide. Do you know that the term genocide was, was invented and used by the Polish writer Raphael Lemkin when he heard about the Semele massacre that occurred in 1933, a massacre committed by the Iraqi army against Assyrians in a city called Semele. And also, this massacre, among many other massacres and genocides, have not yet been recognized, and the perpetrators have not yet compensated by people for their tragic losses, which led to massive exodus. We are asking the Iraqi government to legislate a new law that will cover the rights of Assyrians that were forced to leave Iraq no matter when they return back to their original homeland and all their documents to be reinstated. I would also like to note that Assyrians, even today, are constantly being bullied and threatened to leave their properties and flee Iraq by militias in Baghdad and Mosul and by some members of the KDP, the ruling political party in north of Iraq. They are all involved 
in this new persecution. Official documents provide or prove that the Assyrian people own 24,500 square kilometers of land, which is 34% of the total land owned by Assyrians in what is currently being called Kurdistan and Iraq. My people cannot defend themselves against a political party that gets military aid by countries such as United States and Iran for the purpose of fighting terrorism, but instead the aid used to cause demographic change among minority groups by stripping off people's land and properties. Even the International Airport of Erbil is built illegally on land that used to belong to more than 220 Christian farmers of Ankawa. More ironic, that United Nations building in Erbil is built on a stolen land. While we appreciate the effort of the US government to support and assist minority groups of Iraq, such as Christians and Yazidis, to rebuild and restore their home, hometowns that were destroyed by, by ISIS, we ask the US Congress to pass legislation, legislation that criminalizes the demographic change. We are asking and helping my people to return and remain in what has been our ancestor homeland for thousands of years, the cradle of civilization the cradle of modern civilization. And this can only be done by creating a safe zone with an international support for the indigenous people such as Assyrians and Yazidis. Thank you.